Now, I meet with you nightly. Good evening. Connecticut is bracing tonight for a visit from a rock band, one that the state of New Jersey banned from Giant Stadium. Marilyn Manson is scheduled to play Hartford tomorrow night, but the critics complain the group promotes a variety of negative attitudes, even Satanism. And they're appealing to a higher authority to block that performance. Nightbeat reporter Dennis House is live at the Meadows Music Theater with our big story. Dennis? Gail, good evening. Marilyn Manson is actually a man, and he will be here tomorrow night at the Meadows. Now, earlier tonight, Several members of many religious groups from across Connecticut and Western Massachusetts gathered here to pray that somehow this concert will be canceled. They held hands and prayed to God for this man. Marilyn Manson, whom critics say worships the devil, promotes teen suicide, and strips down nearly naked while on stage. He's biblically wrong, and that, you know, we were just like... A change. We're, we're praying for a change in his life as well as the lives of the people that follow him. These churchgoers have never seen a Marilyn Manson concert, but strongly believe he is bad for children and young adults. I don't agree with anything that he stands for. He openly promotes child abuse, self-mutilation, and rape, and I don't think that that's anything that any of the teens today need to be following. This is what they fear the scene will be in Hartford Wednesday night. Fans in full makeup trying to look just like their idol, Brian Warner, known as Marilyn Manson. Oh, he is the modern-day Alex Cooper. Everybody, you know, they started back in Ozzy Osbourne when he picked the head off the bat. You know, they had all the preachers down here doing the same thing now. I'm Catholic. I don't believe in Satanism. And I still love my own message for the music. It's just an, an act. It's just publicity. Act, publicity, or whatever, these folks in Connecticut say Manson needs help. Marilyn Manson needs God like everyone else does, and that, you know, hopefully when kids walk out of this concert, they will know that he is not the answer, but that they need to look to somewhere else, and hopefully that place will be to Jesus. One Manson fan showed up at the Meadows to protest the protest and said it's up to the parents to keep their kids away from Manson, something he will not do. My son right here. So it's all right if he goes. Sure. He's 18. He'll do what he wants. If he's 14, he can go, too. I'll take him. Now, Marilyn Manson did make an appearance in Connecticut last year at a much smaller venue, the Webster Theater in Hartford's Barry Square neighborhood. There were no major problems reported. We should point out that the protesters have no plans on being here at the concert tomorrow night. They said that they made their protest tonight. Dale? All right. Thank you, Dennis. Reporting live from Hartford tonight. Al? Also making news tonight, Heyman Klein, a lawyer from Old Saybrook, pleads guilty in a murder-for-hire plot. And under a plea agreement, he is expected to be sentenced to 45 years in prison. Prosecutors say Klein paid two men $10,000 to kill this man, Anson Clinton, back in 1994. Clinton was related to a lawyer in Klein's firm, a woman with whom Klein was reportedly having an affair. The Hartford Board of Education, education rather, meeting for the last time tonight and voting to appeal Hartford High School's loss of accreditation. They also learned that Buckley High is in jeopardy. It's officially on academic probation. Governor John Rowland will announce a new Board of Trustees later this week take over the Hartford School District by June 1st. And the story we follow for much of the day today, the severe weather that blew into the state. Big thunderstorms that packed an extra punch hit places such as Weathersfield. There you have the sound of hail coming to us on home video. As if the heavy soaking rain, the wind-driven rain, wasn't enough. And in Waterbury, the sky is lighting up with a flash of lightning. The skies got dark as the storm rolled through at around 3 this afternoon. Luckily, in most places, this storm looked a lot worse than it felt. Commuters exercising caution in Milford today. Slick streets had drivers taking it easy around the corners. Meanwhile, in New Haven, traffic on I-95 moved along at a steady pace. While the intense downpour didn't stop motorists, it did make for a slower commute. This storm also affecting places outside of Connecticut. Several homes were damaged in Staten Island, New York. Authorities believe a tornado might have even touched down in that area. And across the Hudson, police in Jersey City, New Jersey, were searching for a homeless man feared trapped in a collapsed building there. No word yet on how that search ended. But Hilton Catterley is here now with a look at how quickly this storm flew through. Hilton, it was a wild afternoon. It was a wild afternoon, and as we tracked the lightning stroke into Connecticut, we knew that we had severe thunderstorms rolling toward our state. Lightning was just one aspect of this out of severe weather. It began about 1.30 or a quarter of 2 in Connecticut, and the lightning was out of the area before 5 o'clock. 
But uh, the major headline was uh, the apparent sighting of a tornado just north of Bridgeport by live Doppler radar. We tracked it on Doppler 3 radar here at the Channel 3 New England Weather Service. The National Weather Service issued a tornado warning for a period of time from Bridgeport up to just north of New Haven before the uh, storm disappeared from radar. Whether it was a tornado or not, we did have damaging winds reported in Danbury, in Norwalk, where uh, trees were damaged, and in Stamford, where houses were damaged and uh, telephone and electric lines blown over by the wind. In Connecticut, in central Connecticut, most of the uh, weather was confined to uh, small hailstones. You saw the pictures of the hail pounding down in Weathersfield. The rest of the night will be breezy and cool. When you wake up in the morning, temperature should be in the low 40s. By midday tomorrow, kind of an unsettled look, but not stormy. The evening hours, partly cloudy, temperatures in the 50s. That takes care of the immediate future. What's the rest of the week look like? We'll have the full forecast, including a preview of the weekend, coming up in just a few minutes, folks. We'll be waiting for you. Thank you, Hilton. A well-known Connecticut lawyer settles his case with ValueJet for the deadly crash of flight 592 in Florida last May. Garrett Moore of the Cheshire law firm Moore, O'Brien, Jacques, and Yellenek represented the family of Rodney Culver, who was a San Diego Chargers football player who died in this crash. The family is getting more than $28 million, and that is the second largest award involving a commercial airline. 110 people died in that crash in the Everglades. Shocking incidents of neglect and abuse are caught on videotape at a hospital in Indiana, one that treats the mentally ill and disabled, and officials are now taking action to put a stop to this. Nightbeat reporter Tracy Martinez is in the newsroom now with the sound of the pictures. Tracy? Al, the Newcastle State Developmental Center is home to about 160 residents. Abuse allegations were launched against some employees there last fall. But recently, an Indianapolis TV station decided to look into the charges. So they took a hidden camera inside, and here's what they found. It sounds like a drill sergeant giving orders. Can't go out there and pull a Don't sit down. But these harsh commands are coming from caregivers. Sit down. Don't stop. They're the people responsible for the well-being of these mentally disabled patients. A hidden camera investigation at the Newcastle State Developmental Center reveals how residents are really being treated. Residents are supposed to be involved in activities that will help them lead better lives. But this investigation uncovered verbal and physical abuse and almost no therapy. A typical scene caught on tape as residents sit for hours in front of television. This resident dared to move, and this is what he heard. You know, you think about it, you have. You sit there and enjoy the car shaft. Let's see, that's about the third morning. <laughs> Your head's for the tie up there. Watch what happens when he tries to get up again. Sit on down and stay, or I'll put you in that damn chair and tie your ass up. Is that what you want? The abuse and neglect repeated over and over, but the worst examples caught on camera were unmistakable. Stop. How often does something like that happen? I think for certain individuals that are not very well liked, uh, in, it can be an extreme danger. One staff member might have a bad day. And, I'm going to take it out on the person they dislike the most. And a Governor Frank O'Bannon says he was deeply disturbed by this video footage. He vowed to clean up the facility, and today he took a tour. To date, three employees have been suspended. Gail? Thank you, Tracy. Tonight, California officials say they think two people tried to copy the Heaven's Gate mass suicide. The victims found at a San Diego hotel today. One was dead, the other was unconscious, and taken to a hospital. The sheriff's spokesman says both may have been ex-members of the Heaven's Gate cult, and one of the people discovered today lost his wife in March's mass suicide. You'll remember 39 people killed themselves at the Rancho Santa Fe mansion, believing their deaths would let them go on a spaceship trailing the Hale-Bopp comet. Also making news around America tonight, he could have been the first drunk driver to get the death sentence, but instead he gets life without parole. A North Carolina jury recommending the sentence for a man convicted of first-degree murder, killing two people while he was drunk. A defense lawyer telling the jurors today the devil made him do it.
Three women are finally free tonight after spending 11 hours trapped in this underground cave in Arkansas. It happened when a boulder shifted and blocked the entrance to the cave, leaving them 300 feet down with no fresh air or sunlight. Workers chipped away at the stone until there was just enough room for the women to escape. New information tonight on the Michael Kennedy sex scandal. Published reports in Massachusetts say the former babysitter, with whom Kennedy was accused of having begun an affair when she was only 14 years old, will not file charges against him, and neither will her parents. The district attorney's office could still charge him on its own with statutory rape, but it is not clear whether it will do that or respect the woman's wishes to drop the case. She is now a 19-year-old freshman at Boston University. There's another O.J. Simpson sighting to tell you about tonight. The former football star is set to play in South Florida in a golf tournament there to benefit sickle cell anemia. And some victim rights advocates around town are upset that the charity would align itself with a figure synonymous with domestic violence. But tournament organizers say fighting disease is the issue. Well, the people who are part of this tournament are also positioning themselves with him. They are, they are saying somehow what he did is okay because they're not protesting they're they're accepting him into the circle what do you tell that person no we don't want your money to support the cause because you're controversial and all this controversy brings up another point how is simpson who says that he's broke paying for all the golf the organizers say through friends they say he has lots of friends Still a lot more news to come. It looks just like blood, and it does all of the same good things on the health beat. See what doctors and scientists are all excited about. Also, we'll show you why two rather smelly vegetables may offer you powerful protection against disease. And I'm Kathy Moss, live at Bradley International Airport. Are you about to hop a flight in the next two weeks? Well, the airlines are trying something new. I'll have that story coming up. Plus, do traffic jams make you jumpy? If so, you're not alone, but we're going to show you some remedies in a special report, Rush Hour Stress. And some big names are rocking and rolling in Cleveland. We'll show you why. We're coming right back. Stay with us, please. Channel 3 Eyewitness News. This is Connecticut's news station.